Fanfic about Cinder. I didn't like Zenith. And for Sasha. Patch. My name is Hannah, and I hope you liked that beginning segment of the video. I just wanted something fun to do on a Saturday morning. <clears throat> so today we're doing the Thank You Next book tag, and I was tagged by Rainy Days and Stormy Nights, and also Shay's Pages, so I'll link them down in the description below. So, I don't think I have anything else to say, so I think we should just jump on into the questions. Also, I almost forgot, there are two creators of this tag, and I'll put both of them in the description. So, the first question is a book that you said thank you next to, i.e. you DNF'd. And typically, I don't DNF books. I um, find it hard to quit. But one thing I did DNF is The Fountainhead by Anne Rand. I only picked this up because Rory Gilmore loved it, and she told Jess to read it. So I was like, if Jess has to read it, I have to read it. But I got about 50, 40 pages in. And I had no idea what was going on. I read Anthem by Anne Rand and really enjoyed it. Yeah. But yeah, I just had no idea what was happening or going on. And also, that type is really small. I'm sure I'll, I'll pick it up again sometime when I'm retired and have a lot of time to analyze Anne Rand. So, next question. So the next question is... A book that taught you love. And the book that kind of got me into reading before Percy Jackson, I'll say The Penderwicks. It's just like a cutesy summer book about four sisters, rabbits, animals, first loves, and crushes. And it's really good. I really enjoyed it. Ugh. I should reread this. It's so good. So the next question is a book that taught you patience. And I'm going to go with... The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. This took me about three months to read. And I was reading other books um, in between and all that stuff, but I would like sit down and I would like annotate it and I was really enjoying it at the time, like picking out symbolism and like Donna Tartt. And this is the only reason I want to read um, The Secret History because I loved this book so much, but I'm pushing it off because I know it's going to take me forever because Donna Tartt books are amazing, but just time-consuming. Yeah. If you have, you know, a summer vacation and you have nothing else to do, sure, read The Goldfinch. And then the next question is a book that taught you pain. And I'm gonna go with an old-school answer and say Requiem by Lauren Oliver. I think my one of my biggest problems with the Delirium series is definitely the ending. Because a lot of things are unresolved. We have this love triangle that you can assume she ends up with one of the guys, but you're like, in my personal opinion, I didn't like that guy. I want to <laughs> Spoiler. And also, there's a character named Hannah in this. And when a character shares your name and you're like, oh my gosh, this is me, we're the same person, I'm actually in the story, and she doesn't get a good ending. We, we don't know where she is. They like don't meet up, they don't talk, they're going down to take a walk. How did how did you know Lauren Oliver? Like I remember sitting there and thinking, why? Next question. <laughs> Name a book that you loved at the time of reading, but in hindsight you do not like as much anymore, but which you still learn some other qualities from. I think I'm gonna have to give this one to Aragon because I think this is definitely a gateway fantasy and it's one I appreciated 
because back in the day when I read it, it was definitely the book that introduced me to fantasy tropes and what I should expect from fantasy. But if you go back into the story, it, Christopher was young when he wrote this, so it's hard to pay homage without copying. And I think it's hard to walk that line, and I don't think Christopher does a good job of paying homage, but instead copying a lot of different tropes from a lot of different things. And it's very clear he was inspired by Tolkien. It's so close to it that it's not his own. So I appreciate it for what it did for me in my reading journey, but I think if you look at it with a, an adult lens, you can see it's not as good as it once was. Alas. And then question number seven is a book that you're currently talking to, i.e. have the hots for. And is this supposed to be like you're currently reading or like an anticipated read, but either way I'll do both. The book that I'm currently reading is Don't Call Me Crazy, 33 Voices to Start the Conversation About Mental Health. Who can say what oh my bookmark fell out! Ugh, oh, traumatic. R.I.P. Who can say So far. I just read Sean Javidson Hutchinson's woof, what a mouthful story, and I'm really excited for it. And I'm also reading The Hate You Give for the first time. And I was like, I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I'm late to the game, but I'm getting there. I'm catching up, guys. It's happening. And an anticipated release is probably King of Scars because <sighs> I need it now. Ooh. And then question. Number eight, name the book that gonna last, The Book of You, a book that helped you love yourself a little bit more. I'm gonna go with To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper and Lee. This was the book that I think probably made me fall in love with classics, which I'm very thankful for. And I read it when I was 15, freshman year of high school, and it has pretty blatant symbolism, but that's fine. I can definitely understand why they teach it in schools. It's very easy to understand and comprehend and read, and the overarching story is great. Everyone should read it. I don't think anyone should have a problem with it. I, I've never met anyone who's read To Kill a Mockingbird and has disliked it. So, it's gonna last. It's not going anywhere. It's a classic, you know what I mean? And I honestly think everyone should read it. So question number nine is tag somebody, and I'll tag everybody in the description. So. That concludes the video, so thank you for watching, I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you next time. Keep reading and all that jazz. Dang it. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. I can't, I can't go there. Yes. Oh my gosh, I was holding that in so long. Such a bop.